What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here, and today, tonight, this evening, we're talking about how to fake stuff in your photos, and ooh, it's gonna be a good one. Boom! Oh! Is faking stuff in your photos, is photoshopping things into your photos that weren't there originally, is altering things to make them look better, is that cheating? No, I don't think so. These tools are here for us as photographers, filmmakers, as artists, these tools are here for us to use. So I like to use whatever is at my disposal to get the best possible outcome that I can. If by adding something that wasn't in a photo to a photo makes it better in my opinion, I'm gonna do that. I still think that's fair and no rules, anything goes. Here's a picture of downtown Toronto taken from my friend's loft overlooking the Toronto Island. Gray, overcast, not that exciting. What can we do with this? Well, we could punch it up, make it way more dramatic, bring in those clouds if we can, maybe add new clouds, fix the reflection in the side of the building here, maybe add some lightning. That's exactly what we did. And we get something that looks like this. Now we've got that reflection of the lightning in the window. The clouds are much more dramatic. Everything in this photo looks a lot more edgy and just interesting to look at opposed to the way it did. Is this cheating? No. Is it faking the photo? Absolutely. But in this case, this is okay to do. These tools are here so that we can use them to our best advantage. So that's what I'm gonna teach you guys today. Okay, so we're gonna start with something small. In later tutorials, we can work our way up to the more advanced stuff, adding tons of elements. But let's start with this photo I took on my way from Toronto to Hong Kong of the Arctic Circle. We flew over the Arctic Circle, it looked incredible, and I ran to the back of the plane with my wide angle lens, stuck it through the window and fired a thousand shots. This was one of the ones that I liked the most. Now, in this instance, I, I don't need to Photoshop anything. That's a pretty extreme shot through an airplane window with some pretty awesome subject matter on the other side. But most of the time when I take pictures through airplane windows, I'm looking at like a parking structure or some train tracks or just a bunch of trees or the airport itself, nothing really interesting. But we can change that to make it look way more interesting. So that's what we're gonna do in this photo. So pretend that this isn't a cool picture of the Arctic Circle, pretend it's a crappy parking structure that we wanna change. So first things first, I've got a couple images here to choose from. We could replace that, the, we could replace those mountains with the Golden Gate Bridge, we could replace it with Paris or Las Vegas. I'm gonna show you what each one looks like, but I think I'm going to go with Paris. So we'll copy that and we'll paste it into this photo, but we're just gonna turn that layer off for now because I don't need it yet. First things first, I'm gonna double click this background layer and I'm gonna name it Windows so things don't get confusing. I'm gonna go over here to the left side and click on Rounded Rectangle Tool. And I'm going to draw roughly the same size shape that we have of our window and I'm gonna hit Enter. This is what we got. Essentially, we're gonna make a mask. And what a mask is, is it's gonna let us put something behind the photo so that that photo shines through the hole we made using this mask. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and size this mask that we made here to the same size as the window. So hit Command T to bring up the, uh, the image size adjustments box. And first things first, we're gonna rotate that so it fits kind of the same shape that our window is fitting. Now a tip to do this is to turn the opacity down to something like 30 just so you have a good idea of what you're working with. Now, no matter what way we turn this, we're not going to get the perspective right. So what we have to do is hold down Command and then drag those corners in while holding down Command to best fit the perimeter of that window. I like to go a little, just a little bit past the actual outline of the window and I'll explain why in a minute, but you just don't want it to be exact because then sometimes you gotta go back in, delete the mask and adjust the blah, pain, pain in the ass. So just hold down Command, Use these anchor points here and drag that rectangle out as close as you can get. Right here, I'm gonna go up a little bit. Let's work on this corner. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a finagling, if you will. And let's bring that to here. Now, when you think you've got as far as you can and you're like, you know what, I just can't get the top or I can't get the rest, you're gonna keep it selected, right click, hit warp. Now we can drag these black points up and see how that warps the entire shape into something that fits much better. We're almost done here. Let's just drag this up a little bit more. Like I said, we're gonna go a little bit above and then we can hit enter and take a look at our shape. 
pretty good. I'd like it to come out just a slightly on the right side here so we can command T, right click, hit warp, bring that out just a, a little bit. Maybe bring that top down slightly on this side. Okay, Pete, stop, that's good enough. This is our mask. Let's bring that opacity back up to 100. This is what we're working with. With a little more time, you can get it so that the top edge right here isn't so wavy because I don't think any airplane window actually has a wave going on at the top, at least no plane that I want to be in. Now this is important. The layer that you want showing through the window as your new image needs to be on the bottom. So copy this, drag that to the bottom. Now what you want to do is hold down command and click on that rounded rectangle layer. And that's going to give you a selection of marching ants around the entire rectangle we just made. Then you're going to, while that's selected, you're going to click on window. You're going to come down here while that's clicked and select create layer mask. This is what happens. Don't be alarmed. Don't touch anything. Just hit command I. We're going to invert that to get rid of everything. So now essentially what we've done is using this shape as a guide, we punched a hole through this window picture. We've punched a hole in it. So if I hide this rectangle, that transparent background right there is just a hole in the photo. So anything that we show behind it is gonna come through. So now when I turn on this layer, that's Paris, whoop, there it is, behind that window layer. So let's Command T that. Let's, uh, let's come down here to the Paris shot, zoom out a little bit. Command T to drag that down. And there it is. So now we can size that. It's also important to note that you want to pick a photo that's realistic, like maybe something that was taken from heights so that when you're looking at it through an airplane window, it just kind of, it kind of makes sense. It lines up. Like you wouldn't put a photo of like a kid playing soccer out of the plane window because it just wouldn't really make sense at all. It would be hilarious, but it's just, it's not going to work in this instance. So you're going to want to pick something that you've taken in the past, something like that that's gonna make sense with what you're doing. So keep that in mind. So that is looking good. I'm happy with that right about there. So that's pretty cool. Now here's one problem that your eye probably picks up on. This edge of the photo here is way too sharp. We need to blur that out a little bit so that it feels a little more realistic. So you're gonna go over here to where your mask is in the layer panel, double click on that. And it's gonna bring up this properties menu where you can change the feather. So watch, if we drag that feather hardcore, it looks horrible. But what we can do is just drag that feathering enough to like maybe five that it blurs the edges of that photo and makes it feel a little more realistic. So I'm gonna keep it around four, I'm happy with that. Now last thing is because this Paris photo is black and white and this plain shot that I have for the window is blue, we need to match that. So click on the window side of the layer over here and then you're gonna go up to image adjustments, hue saturation and let's just drag that saturation right down bring that darkness down a little because if the outside is perfectly exposed, that means the inside would technically be almost black. It wouldn't be perfectly lit like this because you just can't expose for both inside and outside when you're on a plane trying to shoot for the window. So you're going to want to dip those blacks down a little bit more. Something like that would be cool. And you're going to hit OK. So now look what we've got. We have a shot through an airplane window of Paris that looks absolutely insane. So pretend those mountains weren't there at the beginning and it was a parking structure. So we've gone from a parking structure to the Eiffel Tower through a plane window. And that looks insane. You drop that on Instagram, people are going to be just mashing that like button. Hearts are flowing. It's a good time to be had. So that's a very, very cool example. So let's kill that saturation. Let's get rid of this Paris shot. Let's just hide it, for example. And what else could we do? Let's come over here and use Las Vegas, for example. Let's copy this, paste it here. Boom, pasted straight in. Move that over. That actually looks like without almost any adjustments at all that we are flying into Vegas right now. You could put the reflection of something in someone's sunglasses. This portrait I took of my friend Cyril, he's a magician from Japan, he flew in for a shoot. I did this portrait, I was happy with it, but I thought it's just missing something. So I put a picture that I took of the Brooklyn Bridge in his sunglasses just to give it a little more ah. And I think it works great. Another example would be my friend Gabriel here. Some facts to know about this photo. It was not raining, there was no lightning, the GoPro was not turned on, neither was his headlamp, and his face was not wet at all. All of those things were added in post, using the same sort of techniques. Now that's a little more advanced, and in further tutorials, I plan on covering that, but it could also be something as easy as just Photoshopping in an airplane to something that you already took. 
This looks like I stood between these two buildings for four hours waiting for the perfect moment to capture this plane just passing through the two sides, but I just posted that in in Photoshop. And that's it guys, that's a quick one today. Just something that you guys can keep in your back pocket to further enhance the photos that you're taking. And all of these tutorials, all these little tips, all these little tricks that you can do with these programs and applications and using light hits and replacing photos with other photos and photoshopping portraits to look better, all of these things end up building a huge arsenal that you have that ends up being like a big toolbox. So when you take a photo, you're gonna start thinking in terms of editing because you always wanna shoot to edit. When I'm taking a photo out in the field or out in the real world, opposed to the fake world, <laughs> I'm always thinking about how can I edit this? If I shoot this, can I then shoot this window and put that picture in that window? And when you start thinking in terms of your skills and abilities with your post-production on top of the photography skill that you already have, that's when you can really start pushing your limits, your own limits. You start producing work that is completely next level and really creative in terms of what people see on a daily basis. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial and I will see you in the next video. Peace.